Okay, so as you can see, we have our effigies complete with the exception of the scarlet macaw that we made earlier. Now these are based on original examples that we have recovered in the archeological record, not only in central Arizona, but down south amongst the southern Hohokam. So these are quite expansive in, uh, in archeology. span We find them uh, throughout the region. They are common, uh, somewhat common, I should say, up north into the Flagstaff Verde Valley area. Uh, but predominantly we find these in Prescott culture and Hohokam, which both influence each other. More so Hohokam influenced Prescott culture quite heavily. Uh, these are true to size, so they're not very large. You can see they're about the size of a man's thumbnail. Um, when we look at examples in literature, they are blown up. They are not true to size. They're very large. Again, they're zoomed in, taken with professional photography equipment. In reality, when we recover them, pull them out of the earth, they're quite small and delicate. So now I want to interpret these objects. Now keep in mind these interpretations are not blindsided. Rather, they are based on careful scientific analysis, as well as working with descendant groups, modern descendant groups, such as the Oodam, who of course are descendants of Hohokam groups, Hohokam being here over a thousand years ago. These objects likely represent a larger picture that's intertwined in the prehistoric Southwestern and Mesoamerican cultural, religious, and ceremonial belief system of a layered universe, an upper world, and an underworld representing the sky, the water, and the earth. So starting off with these two triangular objects, we took a look at them earlier in literature. These are upper world representations, likely representing a bird's beak. Moving on to these rounder objects, you can see we have a larger drill hole and then a smaller drill hole up top. These are underworld representations affiliated with the earth, serpent representations or snakes. Finally, another underworld representation affiliated with water. This is believed to represent a dragonfly. And finally, this necklace is now complete. You can see how it turned out. Everything looks great. It's held together with a locally grown organic cotton rope. I have the pendant up top. We have the shells and beads, the scarlet macaw recreation, and then staggered in between shells and beads are the effigies we took a look at earlier. This is not a project you start and expect to finish it within a day or two. Quite honestly, this takes a lot of time, energy, and effort. It took me about a week from start to finish. It's a lot of work, but in the end, you can see it's absolutely worthy of display, and it's a very admirable piece. All right, folks, so that is just about going to wrap up this video series on making and recreating a prehistoric Prescott culture style necklace. If you're interested in purchasing this necklace, I do have them for sale on my website. Go to primitivelifeways.com and click the store tab. I also sell raw argillite by the pound. For those of you who are interested in creating your own objects, they are up for your consideration again by the pound. Once again, I appreciate every single one of you. Hit the like button, share, subscribe, and click the notification bell. We'll see you in the next one. Take care.